Welcome, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I will show you how I glaze the two pots that I showed you how I thrown in video number six, uh, where I did these wonderful crackle effects uh, on the side. You probably remember that. Uh, I thrown two different ones. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I glaze them. In video number six, I showed you how you can create these wonderful crackle textures on your pot. And in video number seven, I showed you how you can trim these kind of pots. And in addition to the crackle effects that uh, we created, I also made some chattering effects on the top of the pot. So today we're gonna glaze them. They have now been brisk fired and they're ready for glazing. So I like these crackle effects to be as um, strong as possible. I like the contrast between the top and, and, and the cracks to be as powerful as possible. Uh, the biggest contrast, of course, is between black and white, but anything, you know, even close to that will still, you know, emphasize the crackle effects. So we have two different pots. One of them uh, is just a pure stoneware. And uh, it's not completely white, but you know, kind of whitish, uh, whitish enough for me to just more or less leave the, the, that on the surface. But the crackles, I would like to make black. So in order to do that, we will uh, put a stain, a black stain in the cracks. So the way you do that is that you take um, black stain, it's a powder you can buy in most pottery supply stores. Put it into water, put a little more water into it than what you would usually do because we need it to get into the cracks. And then slowly we're just going to paint it on the entire pot. Don't worry too much about being precise uh, about it. And if it doesn't cover or, or, or go into all the cracks when you, when you brush it on, don't, uh, don't worry too much about that at this point because we're gonna even it out in just a second. Once you applied the black stains to the entire surface of the crackled uh, side of the pot, you leave it to dry just a few seconds. It dries really, really fast. And once that's done, you're ready to wipe it off with a sponge. Now, I take this bucket of water and I, and I frequently, you know, uh, freshen up the, the sponge in this water and uh, then it's time to just rub it off. And as you can see, if you rub it off with a rather big sponge, you're only going to rub off the, the color, the, in this case, black stains on the surface. And it's going to leave the black stains in the crackles. And so now that we're done, you can see that we have this wonderful pot that is black in the grooves, in the crackles, and just pure um, ceramic uh, stoneware on the top of it. Now, the second pot, you probably remember that I put a big up, bit of black stain into the sodium silicates to create a darker surface. Um, so once it brisk fired, it's not completely uh, black, but it's still you know, grayish and it will be darker once we put a clear glaze on top of it. But as I said, I like the contrast. So for this part, I would like the cracks to be white and the surface to be as dark or grayish as possible. I'm gonna try something I haven't tried before. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use white stains. So a white powder, dissolved in water, and I'm gonna apply that the same way that we did with the black stains to the surface of the entire pot. And again, don't be too worried about if you apply enough or if it, if it goes a little out over the edges and stuff because you're gonna wipe it off again. Okay, so now we are ready to wipe it off and that is exactly the same way that we did it with the black stains. A big sponge, use water, not so much that it runs into the cracks, but enough to, um, to get all the stains off the surface of the pot. So this is uh, how it turned out. And as you can see, 
there's a small layer of white stains that appear to be on top of the of the black stained uh, crackle surface. I think maybe I will wash it a little more to make sure that it doesn't go too gray. But also once we apply the clear glaze, the dark part, the black stains part of it, I believe it's going to be darker. So we, we're going to hope for that. Uh, at least this is kind of an experiment. As I said in the beginning, uh, and as I showed you in video number seven, I also did this chattering effect on the top of the pot. As you can see, there's this uh, effect here. And just like the crackle effects, I like that to be emphasized as much as possible. But I don't want to use the same technique that I've been using for the textured effect on the side of the pot. Instead, I could use a normal glaze, a celadon glaze, um, usually breaks really nice on, on the chattering effects like this. But in this case, I would like the, the, the separation between the top color and the rest of the pot to be as sharp as possible. And with a normal glaze, as you probably know, it's always a little bit difficult to control how much it's going to run or not. And, and it's, I, I don't like to apply my glazes with a brush. Uh, I like to dip it and it's difficult to dip it precisely. Of course, I could use some wax to, to control it. But in this case, I'm going to show you a different technique that, that I've been, been applying to a lot of these, um, these chatted, uh, chatted effects. And that is using an underglaze. For underglaze, I like to use these Duncan uh, underglazes. Uh, I admit it, it's a quite expensive um, solution, uh, but I use very, very little on these pots. So I use them now. Just recently, I found a good uh, recipe for mixing up your own underglaze using stains. And if you already have stains, you can mix these colors and make your own underglazes. I'm going to show you the recipe here and also down in the comments so you can try it out. I haven't tried it myself, but uh, I hear from a good friend that it's working well. So I think I'll try that uh, next time. But for now, I'm going to use um, a little bit of this um, underglaze. The other reason I'm using the underglazes on these particular pots is that um, the side where the crackles are is going to be very graphic, white and black or gray. Uh, so I want to apply some color. I like, you know, stand out a little bit with my pots. I like a, a stronger color uh, on that, that layer, that, that border on the top where we have the chatter fix. So for that, the underglaze is going to work nice. Also, in the end, it's going to be very easy for me to just apply a clear glaze on top of the entire pot. So let's move on with that. Okay, so first, of course, we need to decide what color we want to use. And in this case, I'm going to base it on, base it on a dark blue um, color that I really like. But I'm going to do something that I found works really great for these um, shattered effects. And that is to start out with a, a brighter and, and lighter uh, color um, below the blue one. And that's going to create some you know, interesting, um, interesting uh, combinations in, in the color. So we're going to start out with this. And again, you're going to need very, very little. Um, so we're just going to put this out here. That's it. And then you need a good brush uh, to apply with. A brush that can contain enough, um, enough of, the, of the underglaze to, um, uh, to, so you don't have to dip it too much. And then it's basically just to apply it. Um, What is interesting with these um, underglazes is that if you only put one layer of this underglaze, it's going to be matte. And um, of course, if you put a, a shiny or, or blank uh, glaze on top of it, um, that's going to leave a, a normal kind of a glazed uh, uh, surface to it. But if you apply multiple layers of this underglaze, um, it will actually uh, work out uh, just um, as a normal glaze. It would be, be blank and, and, and look really good. So I'm going to apply a good layer of this. Now, these Duncan underglazes, I don't know if this is the case with all underglazes, but this um, kind of underglaze uh, from Duncan is, I think, I think they recommend that you find only to cone five or maybe four or something. 
I've been firing it up to cone 10 and, and that works great too. So, so don't be too concerned with that. It, it actually works okay. Um, even, even the most bright colors I've been using, uh, I've been using a bright red one, and even that one doesn't burn out in, in high cone uh, firing. So, um, so you can go ahead with that. So now we put the orange there. And now what I'm gonna do here is, I'm actually gonna take some of it off again. So I'm gonna use a little bit of a sponge here. Let me just see. So I have one right here. Um, because what I want to do is I want to only leave uh, the bright color in the cracks, in, in the grooves. Um, I want to leave very little of it on the top of, um, of the pot. So I'm going to brush off. So we need to push it into place again. Okay, now we're ready to put the blue one on. And um, I have another bucket or another bowl here for that. We're going to put just a little bit of the blue one in here. And I have another brush similar to the other one. And now we're going to apply the blue glaze, or the under glaze, sorry. Sometimes there can be areas where it's difficult to, to get it um, entirely um, glazed and then I, I try and just stop the wheel and, and, and just focus on these areas. So, I think that's good enough. I'm just gonna use the underglaze on this part with um, the chattering effect. Uh, I'm gonna leave this just uh, clear glazed and this top is probably gonna end up with a third glazing with gold. But if I do that, uh, or when I do that, I'm gonna go get back to you with that and show you how we do that. So, now it's time for the next part. So we're gonna put this aside and just give it a clear glaze. Okay, so, now we're ready for the second pot. And for this one, I'm gonna go a little more crazy because I'm gonna use a red. Uh, it's called really red, and it is really red. CNO74, I like that, I use that a lot, it's very strong. And um, I'm still gonna use the orange one, the neon orange one um, that we used on the other pot too, and I apply a small layer of that at the bottom and then apply the red on the top. Thank you. 
I don't know if you remember, um, but I told you in video number seven where I did this, um, the, the, the trimming and the chattering effect, that it was a little bit too dry for making the chatter. So the chatter marks are not so deep. So in this case with this pot, I'm not gonna actually wipe off the orange, but I'm just gonna apply a bit of the red uh, on top of it. Sometimes you need to let it dry just a little bit before you apply the second and even the third layer, but it dries really, really quickly, so it's not a problem. Um, So, I think that's ready. It's very red. And again, I think maybe I want to make a gold top for this one. I'm not 100% sure. I will wait until I have done this um, initial glaze. Um, a gold glaze is something you add in a third glaze and it goes to a much lower temperature, but I'll get back to you uh, later with that. So this one is ready. So the last step is to give it a clear glaze, which is what I decided for the two pots that um, I draw. And I always start out by putting the glaze inside and taking it out again. So I'm going to use this. Always have a wet sponge ready when you do glazing. Uh, just like this. I'm just going to pull it in the pot. And then we're just going to throw it around a little bit inside and then just dump it into this pot. Remember to, um, to completely empty it and make sure that there's no, um, no little drips hanging there. So, that should be fine. And now I'm just going to let it dry a little bit. I will do this now. Stay away. And turn it around and pull it out and back into the pocket with the place. So, and again, shake it. 
make sure that you don't have any drips hanging that may act in a funny way. So that's it. And since the rest of it is going, rest of it is going to be glazed with the same glaze, I don't bother too much about this dripping air. So I'm going to let them um, dry off for a few seconds. So to glaze the outside of a pot like this. I find it easiest to dip it, uh, but it depends on how much you have to hold on to. In this case, I have um, a foot that is good enough for me to hold on to. Um, if the foot is not big enough, you can't hold on to it, and then uh, dipping it can be a little bit tricky. But I think in this case, it should work out. So let's try and see how that goes. And this is why you want to have it dried on the inside, because then you can turn it around like this. And just push it on the table, and I think that should be fine. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other part. Again, just dipping it. firing. So now the pots have been glaze fired and uh, we can take a look at the result but first I want to excuse for two things that I forgot in the previous clip when I was uh, putting on the clear glaze on the pots. The first thing is I was holding the pots with my hand as I was dipping it and my fingers somehow you know covered a little bit of the area where I want the glaze. That's not a problem. What you do is you, after it dries up, you can apply a little bit of, of glaze on these empty spots, just dipping your finger into the glaze and dipping it on, uh, leaving, you know, like a few drops and that will even it out and make it look perfect. So that was the first thing. But maybe the most important thing is that I forgot to show you to wipe off the bottom of the pot which is very, very important because you don't want any glaze to be left on where the pot stands in the kiln because then it's just going to burn on to the kiln and you're going to destroy the, the kiln and everything. So you've got to wipe it off and be very, very uh, thorough with that. Uh, no glaze should be left there at all. You can have some glaze on the inside. If you, if you made a, a foot like I did, then you can apply some glaze on the inside. I did that. Some people like that, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but in this case I did. So, let's look at the pots. The first one came out really nice, I think. This is the one uh, where I, I used the, the pure um, uh, stoneware on the outside and I, and, I, and I colored the cracks with black color. I think maybe you can see it a little better here. And I think that came out very beautiful. And as you may remember, we put this red, uh, very red, uh, on the top where the, um, where the texture effect uh, was made, uh, the, the, the chattering effect. On the very top, I just left it pure uh, stoneware with, with the clear glaze, of course. I'm thinking maybe I will apply gold to that top. It's going to, you know, maybe be interesting. I will show that in a later video. I will, I will do a gold firing very soon and I will show you how, um, how we apply a, a real gold uh, to a pot. It, it can look really, really nice. So I think this one turned out nice and as you can see in the bottom, uh, maybe you can't see it, but there's glaze on the inside but I wiped off, of course, this part of it and made sure there was like a few millimeters of edge between the bottom and, and where the glaze starts because when the glaze firing goes on, the glaze expands a little bit. And so you've got to leave room for that expansion. Otherwise, even if it doesn't actually uh, uh, touch the base of your kiln, it can still burn on. So this have, a f even though I did this, this still have like a very few uh, small spots here, but I will grind that off. Uh, I showed you in another video, um, I think it was number eight. Um, 
how you can grind your pots uh, in an easy way. So jump back to that if you want to see that. The other part also turned out very nice. And remember, this was the one where I used a, a, a slip that was mixed with black stains um, to make the surface um, dark. And, and as you remember in the last clip, it actually looked almost grayish, but now with the, when the clear glaze had been applied, it actually turned out black, as black as I, I wanted it. Not completely, but enough. And the cracks have turned out, this was an experiment, remember that, where I put the white stains into the, into the cracks, and it actually turned out much better than I, than I was hoping for. It is clear white, and, and it makes, of course, the contrast uh, very strong. I like that. We applied the blue to the texture effect on the top, but as you see, even though I try to apply it very, very sharp, there's still some edges where it's not completely sharp. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it still looks really nice, and and it was I was I was expecting to get a little more sharp. But again, that's what happened with glazing. You, even even though you've done it a lot of times and you think you're doing it perfect, sometimes it turns out not exactly how you like it. But in this case, I don't think it's actually gonna matter so much because just like the other part, I think I'm gonna apply gold to the top covering both the blue and the little uh, white piece at the top. I'm not 100% sure about that yet, but I think it turned out nice. And in the bottom, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I think you can see that it's, it's shining a little bit. At the very bottom, I have glaze on the rim, of course, on the, on the foot, sorry. Of course, there's no glaze. So that's how they turn out. I'm just gonna show you a couple of examples of, of similar parts that, that I did. Uh, this one, a little bigger, and I have some flowers in it. Also with black stains in the cracks, but on the, in the top I applied a normal glaze. And as you can see in this example, it's actually very, very sharp. So what I did is I first glazed the, the, the clear glaze, then I applied uh, wax. Um, you can get some uh, wax resist that you put on and then the glaze won't stick to it. And then I dipped it in the top to have this uh, blueish um, top. I think this one, this one turned out really, really nice. Um, another example is, uh, is this one. Uh, this is actually wood-fired, uh, which is a completely different thing. But I think in video number two, um, I'm actually gonna, I'm showing you the whole wood-firing process that we went through where this part was also made. But this is also, this is with a different kind of clay. It's a little more red-brownish. Um, but I also applied a color glaze on top of it uh, which makes it look also very interesting and a, and a glazed uh, top. So that's all I had for today. Remember to uh, subscribe to my channel, then you will be notified about new future videos. I have tons of ideas. If you have any ideas for things you want me to show you, please uh, add in the comments or write me a message. And I hope to see you soon again. Thank you.